Oh. How do we get the 30 to 29? Oh. I mean, oh, yeah. How do we get that? We're trying to solve for T, so we yeah. need to get rid of the other stuff. And oh, so what's hanging on is this guy right here by multiplication. Okay. So we divide. Uh, okay, and then we trust that we don't hit the wrong key on the calculator. Okay. Yeah. All right. So think about whether this answer makes any sense. Just a very quick and dirty look at it. The temperature of the cube was 100 degrees Celsius and the water was 20 degrees Celsius to start out. One cools, the other one heats up. They should meet somewhere between those two numbers. That is indeed between my 20 degrees Celsius and my 100, and the 100 degrees Celsius. So that makes sense. The other part, the specific heat of water and aluminum. So aluminum specific heat was 0.215 calories per gram degree Celsius. Water, one calorie over grams degrees Celsius. Now the masses are not the same. One's 150 grams, the other's 100 grams. Close enough for what the crude approximation we're doing. Hewitt talks about the specific heat as sort of being thermal inertia. The bigger the number is, the harder it is to change. So I got my two numbers here. Water has got the bigger number, so water is not going to change as much. So is our answer closer to the original temperature of the water or the aluminum? Water. So that also makes sense. And so those are two very quick and dirty checks. I've asked these problems type things. I've asked problems like this in the past, and some students will get things above 100 degrees Celsius or below 20 degrees Celsius in a problem like this. And if you get that and you can't figure out where it is, at least a quick note saying, I know this is not right. Because it, we can't, I can't put a hot thing in a cool thing and have both of them cool down. Statistically speaking. Because you can't put a hot thing in a cool thing. And have both of them cool down. Oh. I can't put a hot iron into a tub of water and have it turn to ice. It's not. But it will cool a little bit. The iron will cool. The iron will cool. The water will get a little bit hotter. Yes. Assuming we contain all the energy right there. Can we take a break? Let you calm down from the excitement of what we've just been seeing. And I'm hoping before the end of it, we will get to probably the most depressing thing of physics of all time. You said depressing? Depressing. Uh, I was wondering, why do you think that we were so excited? <laughs> it's physics. Oh. It's as excited when you walk in here. Oh. I thought we'd already done that. We did the thing with black holes and the sun dying. Oh, yeah, well, we'll discuss it a little bit more. All right. So we talked about putting a hot object into a cooler environment. The total energy stays constant. I'm not claiming the energy is changing now. What I'm claiming is that if I put that hot cube into a much larger environment, like the middle of this room, then the room is not going to change its temperature any noticeable amount. Because whatever energy the room gets, it'll basically eventually spread throughout the entire room and we're not going to notice it. So we have a different set of rules that we can use to apply to it. That is Newton's law of cooling. And it basically states object loses same percentage of temperature in same amount of time.
In a case that's not abundantly clear what that means, let's do an example. So if I start out with an object at 100 degrees Celsius, so piece of small small piece of metal. at 100 degrees Celsius and I stick it into a room. I measure the temperature at the beginning. I then measure the temperature one minute later. So after one minute, so time, one minute, say it's now 90 degrees Celsius. What percentage of the, or what fraction, you can do it that way too, what fraction of the temperature did it lose? Oh, wait, I need to throw one other thing in here. Uh, into, let's see, 100 degrees Celsius, into room at 20 degrees Celsius. There we go. Now, when I'm asking how much, what percentage did it lose, if you just look at this and go, well, it lost 10 degrees out of 100, it started at 100 degrees, it lost 10 of it, one tenth then how would you handle it if we were dealing in Kelvin? Because in Kelvin, that would be 373 degrees Celsius, and it goes down to 363 degrees Celsius. So looking at the loss, the, the fraction of the loss based upon the actual temperature depends upon what units you're using. So the object loses the same percentage of temperature in the same amount of time, a little bit misleading. Loses the same percent of temperature, the same percentage of maximum temperature loss in the same amount of time. Because if I put something that's 100 degrees, a small cube with 100 degrees Celsius in a room that's 20 degrees Celsius, what ultimately is going to be the final temperature of that cube? What is the coldest it can get? Uh, I heard two different things and missed them both. I think we both said room temperature. Yeah. In this case, 20 degrees Celsius. So the maximum amount of loss in that is 80 degrees Celsius. That's the maximum that most it can lose. And it lost 10 of it. So it lost 10 out of the possible 80 in one minute. And so for any minute, it's going to lose that amount, that fraction of what it could lose. Wait, any minute is going to be 80 degrees Celsius? No, it will lose 10 80ths or 1 eighth. Okay, okay. So now it's 90 degrees Celsius. What is the most they can lose now? 70. Max loss, 70 degrees Celsius. And it's gonna lose an eighth of that. So whatever 70 divided by eight is, Point seven five. So that's how much it lost. So it was at 90 degrees Celsius and it loses 8.75. So whatever 90 minus that is, so that's 81.25. Oh yeah, sorry. You got it? Yeah, you do it. You do okay. It. Can you draw that again? Sorry. I was wondering how you got the numbers like that. It's like a calculator. All right. I'm, I'm going to use different numbers. So I have a. I'll stick with a cube. It could be any shape, but for some reason, the cube works for me. So I have a cube at 120 degrees Celsius. And the environment, the big environment, 
is at 30 degrees Celsius. Some time frame, some time later, and we'll just say 10 minutes later, it's now at 100 degrees Celsius. Now the first thing to do is figure out what is the most it actually could have lost, which is given unlimited amount of time, what's the most it can lose? About 120. 90. 90. It's not going to get not going to get cooler than the room is. It's eventually on the environment. It's going to eventually that's that's the limit right there. So the maximum loss at the beginning is 90 degrees Celsius. Just the difference between the initial temperature of the object and the environment. In 10 minutes, it lost 10 degrees of that 90. So it lost 10 degrees Celsius of the maximum. And so Newton's law of cooling says, and mathematically, that's equal to 1 9. For this problem, Newton says that an object's going to lose one ninth of its temperature every 10 minutes. One ninth of the most it could lose every 10 minutes. So after another 10 minutes, the environment's still 30 degrees Celsius. That's part of the, one of the assumptions that this, the temperature of the environment's not going to change. So after another 10 minutes, Want to figure out what the temperature is? Well, the most it could lose at this point is 70 degrees Celsius. It's at 100, it's not going to get cooler than the room. And so the difference between there is 70. And Newton says it's going to lose one ninth of that. So it's the same time interval. Where are we divided? 70 divided by 9. Yeah, 7 from a couple of 7s and an 8. A lot of 7s and an 8. Make it 8, yeah. yeah. So that is how much it's going to lose. So it serves at 100 degrees Celsius at the beginning of this interval, and it's going to lose a little more than, or a little under 8 degrees Celsius. And so now it's at 92.2, that's repeating, degrees Celsius. So, well, why did I think it would have went down to eight? Would have gone down to what? 80. Oh. Uh, a common mistake is you look at, oh, it lost 20 degrees Celsius here, it's going to lose 20 degrees Celsius here. And that's just not the way it works. Okay. It's how, what fraction did it lose out of what it could have lost? And, and so it, it lost 20 out of a possible 90. Okay. And that's where we got the 1 over 9. Yep. Okay. Uh, and there is a mistake here. You did it. That should be a 2 there. That should be a two there. Why it lost ten? twenty degrees. Okay. I wrote ten for some reason. That's a two there. So that is fifteen point five repeating. You think you're doing now? You're doing seven divided by two over nine. Seventy times two over nine. Fifteen and five over nine. Fifteen and five over nine. Okay, so fifteen point five per meeting. Okay. That's how much it's going to lose. So that number's wrong. So then, so it's losing a little bit more than fifteen degrees. So this would be eighty four point four per Okay. Okay.
That feels better. Let's do another 10. Let's figure out what it's going to be next after another 10 minutes. So now we're here. It's not going to get colder than 30. So the most it could possibly lose is 84.4 repeating minus 30. So the most it could lose is 84.4. Yeah, we'll just go ahead. 54.4. And I'm going to lose the same fraction again, so times 2 ninths, now that we corrected that. So this is going to be the loss. So in this next 10 minute segment, we move from 84.4 repeating minus that at our new temperature. 72.31 repeating. When you were doing the specific heat lab, I assume you were using temperature probes. You had a temperature probe in the hot water. Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you take it? At, did any of you do a, a graph of the temperature and pull the probe out just to watch it cool off? Watch the probe cool off? Yeah. yeah. So you, you did it? What did the graph look like? What do you mean? Oh, I was wondering if you if you were doing because uh, LabQuest Two has the graph feature on it. I was saying no, I don't think it was. Well, we it didn't show us a graph. It just show our number just de just declining. Okay. If you did, if you had it on the graph screen and were actually running the graph, it would look. They all look similar. We do it just a fancy graph here. So uh, let's see, that's 10, 20, 30, 30. Yeah, so that's. 30. So this is time in minutes. And so this is 10, 20. So this is temperature in degrees Celsius. So we start out. I didn't miss that. So it's 120 degrees to start with. After 10 minutes, it's 100 degrees, which puts it here. After 20 minutes, so the next 10 minute period, it's 84. Point four. So let's put it somewhere around like that. After the next 10 minutes, it's now 72.3, so there's 72. It's not a straight line, not supposed to be a straight line. There's my bottom right there. That's the, uh, no, sorry, 30 degrees in our problem here. So that's the lowest it can possibly be. What the graph is doing is it's getting closer and closer. Is it like one of those graphs that has an acid though, or is it kind of just? Absolutely. It will get closer and closer. Mathematically, it will never touch. In reality, it'll get to the point where you can't tell the difference between the temperature of the cube and the temperature of the environment. It will be close enough. Now mathematically, you can come up with an equation for that line, but we don't need to do that. Uh, but anyway, they all follow that basic curve shape like that, getting closer and closer to whatever the temperature of the room is or the environment whatever it happens to be. All right, questions before I give you one to do. All right, so we're gonna do a small object. Okay. 
80 degrees Celsius. And that's what we put into a large room at 25 degrees Celsius. After two hours, so two hours will be the time frame. After two hours, the object is now 65 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> After the next two hours, so four hours after we start the experiment, what is the temperature? And if you need to borrow a calculator, there are, I see two right here. I think the others are in the other room. <laughs> 